Hello and welcome to Lunchtime Politics, reaching you from our global headquarters here in the nation's commercial nerve center, Lagos. I'm Jeffrey Uzama, coming up on the program. President Bala Tinubu to commission the Lagos Rail Red Line project and infrastructure transportation system to aid intrastate mobility aimed at reducing traveling time in the city state. I don't say Deputy Governor Philip Shaibu takes battle over who is PDP's authentic governorship candidate to the PDP headquarters. The demand for a certificate of return, insisting, is the party's flag bearer. And with the frequent collapse of the nation's power greed, the House of Representatives set to investigate incident leading to national embarrassment. Welcome again to the program. We're coming on air with the happenings in the nation's commercial hub where President Bala Tinubu will be commissioning the Red Line project in Lagos today. An interstate infrastructure development aimed at improving transportation within the city centre it spans across 37 kilometers. The red line will share the right of way with the Lagos Kaduna Standard Gauge Railway. The route will initially run from Agbado in Ogun State to Yingbo in Lagos State. Those are live visuals and pictures you're seeing with notable stations including Agbado, Iju, Agege, Ikeja, Osho, Dimoshin, Yaba, and Oyingbo. To ensure the smooth operation of the train service, 10 vehicular overpasses and pedestrian bridges have been constructed. Once operational, it is expected to facilitate 37 trips daily. It will accommodate approximately 500,000 passengers. The Lagos State Government is seeking to reduce travel time and enhance economic productivity with the red line. So you're seeing live pictures. The president is expected at this particular venue any moment from now. So from where uh, you are, I'm sure you can see... Uh, some governors, as well as deputy governor, of course, the deputy, the governor of Ogun State is right there, uh, Dakwa Abiodun, as well as others who will be joining the president and they are lining up to welcome him as he commissioned this very milestone in the history of Lagos State. There's a blue line, but this is the red line constructed by the Lagos State government. As soon as the president makes his way here, uh, we'll switch gears and get the thoughts of what he has to say about this very legacy project. And to a rare scenario in the nation's political history and twist to the Edo State governorship race, the State Deputy Governor Philip Shaibu, who emerged as a candidate in a parallel governorship primary from the PDP, uh, stormed the party's national secretary to demand for a certificate of return. Mr. Shaibu's action is in spite of the electoral umpires, uh, all the uh, party's presentation of a return Certificate of return to Aswe Godalo, who was declared winner in the party's main primary in Benin City. The deputy governor insists that he's the authentic flag bearer for the September polls. Uh, today is the day set aside by the electoral guideline approved by the National Working Committee to be the day that uh, the return certificate will be issued. And so it's, it's not something surprising I'm here. I'm here to receive my uh, certificate of return because I won the primaries uh, in Edo that was conducted and uh, the authentic delegates voted. I'm sure when you look at the walls of the PDP, you see the, uh, the names of all the delegates that voted for me on the walls of PDP. Uh, when the party internal mechanism is being followed, and it's obvious that uh, the party is not letting to listen. The next line of action, obviously, will be the judiciary. But I pray we don't get there, and that is why I came today. I'm sure in the coming days, the national chairman and others will adhere to what have brought me here today. And when they do so, obviously, there won't be need to go to court. But if they don't do what is needful, needful in the sense that I won the primary with the authentic delegate, the certificate should be returned to me. If that is not done, we will not have any choice to seek for interpretation by the court. And away from that, so let's tell you that the residents of Gonin Gora community in Chiku local government area of Kaduna State have blocked the Abuja Kaduna Highway following the attack on the community 
by bandit last night. Members of the community were said to have been kidnapped and others injured during the attack. Angered over the incident, the resident took to the streets this morning, blocking the busy Kaduna Abuja Highway, and the development has caused heavy traffic on the road, with many motorists now stranded. The National Power Grid is reported to have collapsed at least 13 times in 2023, and some more incidents have been recorded this year, uh, the last two months. Perhaps it's why the House of Reps has now resolved to investigate recurrent incidents, which has now become a national embarrassment following a motion moved by Representative Billy Osarawo from Edo State, who believes if checked, uh, can improve the nation's security and boost economic growth. The Speaker calls the House to order as the second day of plenary for the week resumes. <laughs> A member, Mr. Billy Osawu, moves the motion on the frequency of collapse of the national grid, which has forced businesses to invest in alternative power sources, thereby raising their operational costs and leaving end users with exorbitant prices. Mr. Speaker, the House recalls that the nation is currently facing its worst form of insecurity, including insurgency, banditry, kidnapping, and other violent crimes. The collapse of the national grid will embolden criminal activities and security facilities such as the Vigiscope app, the Police Situation Room app, or Police Command Control Rooms can be compromised during the dark hours. Tracking devices that need power to reach telephone lines can be hampered. Mr. Speaker, cognizant of this, that if the frequent national grid collapses, are thoroughly investigated and solutions proffered. It will end the continuous system collapse, boost the economy, and reduce the suffering of citizens. The House unanimously adopts the motion. And as amended, you say aye. aye. Those against, you say nay. That is have it. Following another motion by Mr. Tafik Akile Soro, the House also mandated its Committee on Digital and Information Technology to lawyers with the Ministry of Information and National Orientation, National Broadcasting Commission and other relevant agencies to investigate the agreement between government and Star Times to fast track the complete digitization of the Nigerian broadcasting industry and report back within four weeks. Daily Omoyeni, Channels Television News. Well, as the lawmakers are complaining or lamenting over this incident of power grid collapse all the time, there is a lot to deal with in the country uh, from security or insecurity, better put, to the issue of the economy, to which zooms into the inflation and the cost of living, to foreign exchange, to the polity and the politics, which is why we're being joined on the program to give perspective to make sense of the state of the nation by a former member of the House of Representatives and a former speaker of the Akwaibom State House of Assembly, who is joining us via Zoom uh, from Uyo, Mr. Onofiok Luke. Mr. Luke, thank you so much for coming on the program. Uh, thank you very much, Jeffrey. Uh, well, uh, that's not on uh, Mr. Onofiok Luke. That's actually uh, Mr. Dachong Bagos, former member of the House of Reps, he joins us. Okay, yes, Mr. Luke, we just wanted to establish that uh, somebody has now hijacked your image, but it's your former colleague, so <laughs> I apologize for Thank that. Thank you, Jeffrey, it's me. <laughs> All right, I'm so now, is, now everybody has now seen that you're the one. So we also have, uh, just you saw him a moment ago, Dachong Bagos, former member of the House of Reps, joining us from Abuja Studios. Mr. Dachong? Yeah, afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, okay. Thank afternoon. you so much for coming on the program. Uh, well, let, let me come to you, Mr. Luke. Let, let's start, yeah. Both of you are members of the PDP. So let's start, before we get to other issues of national interest, let's start with this development in uh, Edo State. Um, Mr. Luke, we know that you have uh, tried to be a governor of Aquaibon State. You are an aspirant. Uh, and then you know how these things play out practically. Um, but what, is what do you make of what is going on in a uh, state with the Philip Schreiber scenario? Uh, Mr. Dachong, that question is also going to come to you, Mr. Luke. Okay, uh, Geoffrey, um, I, I wouldn't want to discuss party issues as of now because we have um, matters of national importance that um, um, need to be addressed. If um, we don't have a country, if uh, the citizenry are not happy, we'll not be talking about party. But uh, having... Um, Push that to me for now. I 
we have a sad situation in our party as it is. Since after the 2023 elections, um, we've not had opportunity to sit down and X-ray the activities um, or our outing during the last elections to know where we fared better and where we have to make corrections. And as long as we have not sat and closed the door to talk, to speak about reforms in the party, to call a spade a spade and ask people who ought to act to act courageously, we will continue to have these scenarios of party members acting in one way or the other. I, I have followed the, um, the scenario in Edo, and um, I have not followed to the point of knowing um, where was the party primaries conducted, who, was, um, who won the party's primaries, um, deeply except from what I have read in the news. But what I think we should do now as a party is to try to close ranks because um, without being a naysayer, um, we shouldn't. We shouldn't provide an opportunity to lose a do state to the opposition or to any other party as of now. The other parties have strong candidates, and um, like the Labour Party has the former NBA president, uh, Olu Mide Apata. You have uh, our party as of now saying it is uh, Sue Igodalo, and then you have um, uh, the senator uh, Opebolo from uh, the APC. And so what we need is to um, calm Fred Neves and then bring all the agreed parties on top of the table and to speak and find a way to bring the party together. After that, we would be advocating for reforms in the party. The National Working Committee is not living up to their responsibility. And it is sad that some of us as foundation members of this party who have stayed in this party up till now, that we are not being given a voice, we are not given a place to vent what are our grievances, even for some of us who contested election. We've opted today, the party has not called people to say, okay, this is what we are going to do, this is where we are going to, this is how we are going to make reforms. So very soon, the young talks of the party are going to be calling for reforms because we don't have any other party to go to except these ones. We don't believe in jumping from one party to the other. And so the party should come together, bring Philip Schreiber on top of the table, bring other aspirants on top of the table so that we have a common front for the general elections in Edo. All right, Mr. Look, let me, let me go to Abuja studio. Uh, uh, Mr. Bagos, uh, I don't know how much time uh, we have to talk on this, but maybe you touch on it for like 30 seconds and then we'll go to the issue of the day. Yeah, yeah, well, I, 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 I would build on what uh, Honorable Luke um, uh, just said, rightly, that, look, uh, we need reforms in the party. We need everybody on board to be able to galvanize, go back to the drawing board. How can we get the party, uh, the PDP, to be able to win not just Edo and reclaim other seats and, and, this, and other states within the country? Because if we now, um, if we continue the way on what is going on in Edo now, uh, uh, opposition and whosoever has interest in killing the PDP will divide and rule. And so, so it's very important that everybody comes to the table and let's all have uh, that sense of belonging to see that okay, we all bring our expertise to see that we can we we proffer solution uh, to the problems that are on ground. But uh, unfortunately, how did it get to this point that we now have two candidates in Edo? And at the end of the day, who will rightly and justfully uh, the people who want to vote? So, so these, these are issues that uh, we couldn't have even allowed it to get to this uh, certain point. The APC had its issues. They were able to resolve it. So why is it that PDP have not been able to resolve that up till now? We still have uh, two people parading as candidates of the PDP in Edo. All right, so uh, let, let's now go back to the issue of the day. Let, let me come back to you, uh, Honorable Luke, on this particular issue, which has to do with the cost of living that we're experiencing in the country. As you've act uh, actually admitted, there's a lot going on. Right now, everybody is seeking for solutions. So I don't know what you've been contemplating as to the way out of this crisis. I, I know you're a lawyer, you're not an economist, but you're a lawmaker, you've been a speaker of the House, you've been a member of the House of Reps. And if you're on the floor, for instance, I'm sure you'll be making proposals. What would be those proposals right now? Uh, and what is the government doing wrongly that they're not thinking through that you have in your kitty that could help reverse this trend? Um, right now, we need all hands to be on deck. First, um, 
I'm not a member of the president's party, but um, just um, if I can uh, borrow the words of uh, uh, Mr. Peter Obi, uh, the candidate of the Labour Party yesterday when he issued a statement. For the fact that you are in opposition does not mean that you have to go on with thoughtless criticism. You have to offer commendation where there are good reasons for that, and then you have to offer suggestions to build upon where there are good costs. And so um, we have a president um, after the elections, now is governance, we have a president. And while as an opposition party, we would be looking for how to claim power, but right now, what is important to Nigerians is how do we offer governance? And a man as a major as president, he, has, um, he won the election, the, he was judicial, uh, judiciary had pronounced um, his victory equally. So all what we need is all hands to be on deck. The economists, those who have um, the solutions to the economy, those um, who have um, um, the eggheads, who have uh, some solutions to profess should come to the table. For me, um, I think we are in a situation akin to 2020 when we had COVID. There's need for now for us to get out of these doldrums for us to partner with the government in power. We cannot pray for the president to fail because if you pray for the president to fail, that means that you are praying for the country to fail. And so we pray for him to succeed and support him to succeed until when we get to elections time, we begin to see how we can talk politics. But for now, we need to talk governance. How do we partner with him? We found the uh, private sector coming together through philanthropic effort to support the citizenry during COVID-19, during that lockdown. That is what we need now. We need that support of okay. well-to-do individuals through philanthropy in the first instance for the survival of the common man. The other one is that I, I listened carefully to the president's message, or I read the president's message to Pan Yoruba organization yesterday in Nondo saying, I take responsibility for what is happening. That is leadership. And so having taken the responsibility, and he has uh, made some salient point. He said he cannot allow the economy to maraud us. We have people who have profiteered every time we have challenges in this country. So, for instance, when we had the Naira redesign, we had the POS operators who profiteered. Some would sell uh, 1 million Naira for 1.2 million. And so now we have people who are profiteering with the current FX um, rate challenges in the country. We have lost a sense of community. We have lost communal um, um, sense. We have lost sense of brotherhood. And so we are thinking of individualistic survival, individualism. And so everybody wants to make ends meet for themselves. They want to profiteer. They want to become billionaire. So all what we need is that let us bring national interest at the front burner of our actions, of our thought. Now, you can imagine we've heard about news of people smuggling food product out of the country. We've heard about interceptions. We've heard about it in Zamfara, about 50 trucks. We've heard about it in Sokoto because they want to go and sell outside the country and make profit in foreign currency. All right, so Mr. Look, if, I, if, I'm, <laughs> if I may button just for a moment, uh, uh, the president okay. has arrived uh, in Lagos, so we will be going on to uh, that particular event on one of our platforms. We'll continue the conversation right here. Uh, Mr. Lu so those are the visuals of the president. Uh, you can see the chief of staff as well and the governor of Lagos State. Uh, this is the national anthem on this particular platform while we continue our conversation. Mr. Luca, I would like you to land on your thoughts so I can go to Mr. Bagos. Okay. And so we, we all what we need right now is to support Mr. President. Now, I and he has said at the meantime, presently, that is a challenging time for all of us. Um, he has acknowledged the times which we are, and he has given words of hope. See, one thing I learned somewhere when I went for personal development that the great, uh, um, what they call a um, um, stack door paradox, where you acknowledge the challenge as a leader, you acknowledge the challenges that you are faced with, and then you communicate hope. That's what Mr. President has done, right. and I want to believe that we are going to vote on that renewed hope agenda and support him, believing that his promises would deliver on the long run. We were uh, we had um, economists uh, prefer that at the uh, uh, um, at the third quarter uh, uh, Lu things would begin to settle. All right, Mr. Look, I, I know you have a lot to say, but we're we're trying to manage uh, as much time as possible. Let me go to uh, mm -hmm. Buja Studio for Mr. Barkos to have his first take on this issue of uh, national solution to our economic, if you will, dilemma. 
Yeah, well, uh, um, solution to this dilemma, it's, it's something that uh, uh, Mr. President have taken responsibility, but so, but um, in taking responsibility, we need action to this responsibility. But mine is that whenever there is a problem, what was the foundation that has led to the house collapsing, especially economically at the moment? Because first of all, if there, the, the major cardinal point that drives governance in, 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 the, in the country or even in the state is the budget. The reality of our budget today is not visible according to the projection of when the budget was passed, meaning that between now and next year, what was budgeted and what was passed by the National Assembly is not going to hold the economic indices of this country in the next, in the next three years because the budget was passed when the dollar was at 800 naira. Now the dollar is above 1,000. So first of all, the actualization of the dollar or of the budget that was passed to be able to push and to get us uh, to the next four years is not realistic. So the president needs to go back to the drawing board to look at that. If not, most of the capital uh, projects in, in, uh, in the budget will not be achieved in 2024 because the high cost of inflation and so on. So, so first of all, go back and look at how can the inflation that has addressed, uh, that, 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 that has been able, uh, that attacked the, the, the economy, and you be able to address from the National Assembly, be it supplementary budget, be it whatsoever, that needs to, to be looked at. If not, most of the items in the budget for 2024 will not be achieved because the budget as it is now is not realistic. Look All at right. what are the, 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 uh, the unemployment rate that we have. What is the actual statistics do we have? The problem of Nigeria today as a country is that with which statistics is government working with to be able to give you and I the adequate intervention that we need in terms of economy? With what statistics are we using? Where is the data that is it the conditional cash transfer, the social intervention? Who is getting what? What is so the actual data that government needs to work with needs to be really be that data that we should be able to... When was census taking, uh, that took place last? So data right. in the first place is an issue for government to be able to reach to the poorest of poor right. in addressing these issues. And All looking right. at the farmers, well, because now when you want to look at how will the, the uh, farmers get to go to farm in, in, uh, in the next rainy season, to me, coming from Plateau State, where we have had the issue of insecurity there will be high level of food, uh, uh, All right, food Mr. in the next between 2024 and 2025. Um, these Mr. are issues. That, where is the fertilizer? So All these right, are Mr. issues that government needs to go back to the drawing board and look at things adequately. All right, Mr. Bagos, I, I just have barely like maybe four minutes to wrap up the show. So I want to have your takes, uh, your expertise as much as possible. Let me come to you, Mayor, Honorable Luke, on on, the, on another issue which has to do with this tinkering with the uh, uh, constitution to amend it. My interest and a lot of interest is on the state police. What's your perspective? Some people are afraid that the governors will abuse this, which was the initial fear that delayed it, but now it looks like everybody's on board. What's your take? Um, my take is that um, because of the nature of our challenges and the peculiarities of each state and each region, we actually need some um, kind of security outfit. You will see that um, different states have tried to come up with some security outfits. We saw a security outfit under um, Governor Tom in Benue State. And um, to deal with the internal securities in my state, my governor, Governor Moeno, came up with a community watch, a security outfit to be able to check um, the issues um, that um, has to do with the peculiarity of our own state. So this has to be institutionalized. This has to have a legal back. And so I believe that there are going to be certain checks that are going to be introduced in the Constitution by way of provisions in the um, State uh, Police Service Commission to check the powers of the governors um, in, um, um, in, in, in deploying, uh, in deploying uh, these police forces 
to ensure that they are not deployed to their personal benefit. Uh, an example is offered in the appointment of uh, judicial officers from state. You know, you can recommend from state that the National Judicial Council, Federal Judicial Service Commission, has to give some clearance at the national. So I believe that some semblance of that structure in the appointment of uh, judicial officers will be um, incorporated in the uh, provisions of the Constitution as it relates to state police. And um, win-win, um, Bagos, my friend, my brother, has talked about um, insecurity at the local right. level. Now right. a whole lot of people can go to farm. Okay. That is part of uh, the problem that we are faced with. All right, Honorable. Look, let, let, let's go to Mr. Bagos. Uh, I'm literally racing against time. I wish we had more time to get your perspective. Mr. Bagos, uh, your take on this particular issue of state police. I wonder if I'll have time to talk about parliamentary and presidential system, but uh, let's uh, talk uh, about uh, state police. 100%, 100% in support of it. When, when, when we were in the House in the Ninth Assembly, uh, I and Luke and other members, we, we, we were conversing for the state police uh, because we know uh, uh, how it's going to proffer solutions. So we are in support of this, and we are still giving uh, whatsoever legislative support and backing we will be able to give uh, in respect to the state police because we know that whatsoever fears whosoever we might be having we know that there will be checks in terms of uh, addressing some of these issues when the constitution is being amended because we're going to have the state security council. The major decision in terms of uh, uh, security will be taken in the state, not just by the governor. And again, we're going to have some clearing uh, uh, house, again, even uh, with some collaboration with the federal police and others. So it's not, it's not an issue that everything will just be on the table of the governor. No, there will be some, so, so, some clearing house. A governor cannot just wake up and go into the open market to start buying weapons. A governor cannot just wake up and do some certain things. We'll have some clearing house to see that, look, in as much as they are being weaponized and equipped, we'll still have some checks, how funding will come in, and most of these areas. But the major issue with the state policing is that the locals will police themselves in terms of prosecution, justice will be dispensed. Those are areas that is very, uh, very pertinent and very important to us as a people that let's police ourselves. And whosoever will come in another way, to, we will be able to identify. So that is just the basic for us in addressing these issues by conversing for state police. When we police ourselves, we'll be able to know different people or any alien that will come into our community. So that's most of the, that, that's part of the major essence of us promoting the state police. Absolutely, that's a good place to to to, to just uh, uh, leave it on, on the program for today. Uh, trust me, I I wish we had more time. So I, I'm sure I'm going to get your commitment if I when I invite yeah. both of you again because we need to talk uh, further. This is not just enough, and I know you have a lot a lot to offer the Nigerian state in terms uh -huh. of solution. But I must thank you. Uh, Duchess Bagong, uh, Bagos, rather, former member of the House of Reps uh, from Plato State, as well as Honorable, uh, Honorable da, da, let, let me not say it the wrong way, Honorable Dag, Dag, Dachong Bagos, <laughs> as well as Honorable Onofiok Luke, well, so that the Honorable well, spread across every room. You have not corrupted. At least don't do the Bagos, you have not corrupted. <laughs> No, 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 I wanted to share the honorable amongst everybody equally. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on the program. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. All right. Thank you. And that's it on the program. Thank you so much for your time and company. I'm Jeffrey Uzaba. Bye-bye.